don't think you can overstate the impact the Nintendo Entertainment System had on video games. I mean, it changed everything. In fact, the entire modern notion of what video games are can really be traced back to the NES. And one of the main reasons for that is that the NES pushed gaming beyond just you know, screens and boards and quarters. The NES helped turn video games into adventures. It wasn't just board one anymore, it was world one. You weren't really going for high scores anymore, now you're going on epic quests. You can see that change in this. It's the NES classic, Mighty Bomb Jack, from the Wii U Z Shop. The original Bomb Jack was an arcade game with a very simple premise. So you had a bunch of screens, right, and each one you had to collect all the bombs. Do that and you'd move on to the next screen. Keep going, get the high score. That's Bomb Jack. But when it was time to make a sequel, Tecmo changed it up. It wasn't just screens anymore. Now you had scrolling worlds and treasure and mummies. You were inside a freaking pyramid. Now you had Mighty Bomb Jack. And it was mighty. Still fucking the hardest balls though. So you play as a guy named Jack. Jack wears a mask and a cape. He can float across the screen. He has to kill some demon named Beezlebutt. Because, obviously. So you have to help Jack get through the pyramid, collecting as many treasures as you can along the way. And mechanically speaking, it plays like a classic 2D platformer. You run, jump, and avoid the enemies. But the catch is keeping Jack's greed in check. You see, Jack has these special abilities. If he uses a mighty coin, he can upgrade himself for a limited time. One coin turns him blue, which lets him open orange treasure chests, use another and change colors again and again, and each color gives Jack a progressively more valuable ability, again, for a brief window. But what makes it a fun mechanic is the way you have to manage it. If you collect nine coins, the game punishes Jack for being greedy. He gets sent to a torture room where he has to avoid enemies long enough to jump 50 times. Good freaking luck with that. So you have to use your mighty coins, but you also have to keep some for when you really need them. It's a unique idea, and it, it definitely gives Mighty Bomb Jack a distinct feel among its NES peers. Where it feels less distinct is its presentation. Mighty Bomb Jack sort of looks like any other NES game. Not bad, not great, certainly nothing unique but the music's a bit worse, which is always disappointing given how many NES games have classic soundtracks. Mighty Bomb Jack has like two average songs that just keep repeating themselves. And considering how often you die, that, that gets really annoying. And speaking of which, I am terrible at this game. That Mighty Bomb Jack is just unforgiving. Touch one enemy and you lose a life. Lose three lives and it's back to the start. This is one of those NES games that just demands perfection, so... For a lot of people, it's, it's probably way too frustrating to be worthwhile. But the game at least controls well. Jack's a little drifty, and he jumps like 100 feet high, but for the most part it's responsive. At the very least, you, know, you die from the challenge, not from bad controls. So that's a good thing. Mighty Bomb Jack is a very good NES game. It's also a maddening NES game, but that's the way it goes. You know, we, we were gluttons for punishment back then. If you're looking for a retro platformer that plays well, feels unique, and is also a genuine challenge, I'll throw on a cape and get some fuse wire. For the explosives, that is. Actually, skip the explosives, that's bad advice. It's Mighty Bomb Jack for the Nintendo Wii U.